evening.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Open your hearts and minds to hear the word of the Lord. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 55. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the, middle, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign, which will not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read responsibly Psalm 65 is printed. Praise awaits you, O God. You call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. The streams of God are filled with water. You provide the people with grain. You crown the year with your bounty. And your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 8. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the Spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because they had no root. 
Other seed fell on thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it, making it unfruitful. But the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to Lord Christ. Please be seated. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and very few 
will find it. So after Jesus says that, it should not surprise us at all that the message that we love, the message of God's forgiveness, His mercy, His grace, that wonderful, beautiful message that we live by, that we cling to. There are people, as we've heard over the last few weeks, and even people in our own family who don't believe that message, who don't care about God's love, His grace, His forgiveness. They don't care about where to find that beautiful message right there in the Bible. It should not surprise us at all. So, to help us, to uh, teach us, if you will, how it is that different people will reject God's word in different ways where some will accept it, Jesus tells us the parable. Now, if you don't know what a parable is, I'm going to tell you. A parable is very simple. It's simply an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. And today, Jesus shares with us the parable of the sower in the seed. Now, I know I asked when I first got here, how many farmers do I have? And nobody raised their hand. And then I was told, you didn't ask how many retired farmers. <laughs> So I'll ask you that. How many retired farmers do we have? All right, we got a, you're too young to be retired. <laughs> well, you ask any farmer, they're going to tell you about what it takes to get a crop to grow. You've got to first plant the seed, right? And Jesus says that all farmers do that. They go and they just sow the seed. Some of that seed will be snatched away by birds. Some of that seed, that seed will be briefly, will last only a little bit of time, and then it'll be scorched by the heat. Some will grow beautifully at first, like my garden at home, my vegetable garden that Wendy and I planted. It took off like gangbusters. It looks great now. Not so much. <laughs> Must be the heat, uh, even with water. So some, you know, but you know, our problem is it got choked by weeds. But that's what happens, Jesus says. Some will grow well at first, but then the thorns and bees will choke it out. And then some will grow and produce a good crop. I just get, I get a kick out of it. I don't know why. I'm having a really boring life, but I sit there on my porch and I look over at the cornfield across the street, and it's got tassels on it. And Wendy's saying, it's too soon. It's too soon. No rain is going to stub that corn, and that tassel will just come out. The whole field this morning was filled with tassels, and that rain must have done some good. She keeps yelling at me to pray for rain. And I've been praying for rain. And we got rain, right? The Lord knows when to give it. He gives it at the proper time. And so the farmers should be happy. I'll, I'll go on a side note. I'll tell you a story. When I first got into the ministry, my very first congregation, I get to Woodlake, Minnesota. That'll tell you right away, Minnesota, right? And the farmers all there, I had dairy farmers, hog farmers, and crop farmers. And all of them say, Pastor, you've got to pray for rain. We need rain. And so every Sunday, we pray for rain. And God sent the rain. And it rained. And it rained. And it rained. And they came to me next day, Pastor, please ask the Lord to stop the rain. We can't get in the fields. I learned right then that nothing makes a farmer happy. But I also learned that a farmer is a great example of faith because they just put that little seed in the ground and they can't do anything about it. God is the one who makes it grow, right? So that's why Jesus uses a story like this to get into our heads, to help us understand. He tells us that the farmer who sows the seed knows one thing. Some of that seed will not grow. Some of it will land on rocky places, hard places, and they won't get a chance to get into the ground and germinate, and it'll get eaten up by birds or whatever might happen, but it's not going to grow. As a matter of fact, Jesus said a farmer went out to sow a seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. The birds came and ate it up. Another thing I've learned is that birds have really good eyes. Because I've watched, you guys have, we have a lot of robins, don't we? And I've been watching. I've been trying to figure out their little, you know, cultural connection, little social groups and what they do and how they act. Because it always seems that robins are always picking on each other. But the one thing I do know, they'll drop down on the ground and pull a worm out of the ground like nothing. I can't see it, but they can. And Jesus says those same birds, you know what they can also see on that path? They can see those seeds. As soon as the farmer puts it down, he'll turn his back, those birds will go down, they'll either eat it right there or they'll take it back to their nests. So those seeds don't get a chance to grow. <coughs> As a matter of fact, Jesus said that Satan works the same way. Satan is just like those little birds. Satan can snatch that word of God right out of our hearts just as quick as anything. He says, 
When anyone hears the message about the kingdom of God and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. When people have a hard time grasping the message of the kingdom of God, it's very obvious to some. I've been working with people for 30 years now and the Word of God. And I know when people get it, you can see a smile on their face. And when they don't understand it, they get that look my wife gives me after I read her a sermon. She don't understand. She just looks at me and says, I don't get it. And that means i got to go back and start all over. But Satan will come in and he'll snatch that word away. That's why Jesus went into all the towns and villages preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And I guarantee you this. It doesn't matter when it comes to anybody preaching about Christianity. There's not a religion in this world that comes close to teaching what Jesus teaches us about God. Every religion in the world teaches you that you can, well, you can be loved by God if you do what is right and if you follow what that particular God tells you to do. It's only in the Bible, only in the words of Jesus do you discover that your best efforts don't add up, don't, or can't make up for what you've done. It doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to kind of balance things out with God. You're not going to do more good than you have evil to make God love you. Because none of us can reach the perfection that God commands. And only in the Bible, only in God's Word, do you find the teaching that in order to correct the problem, God sent His one and only Son to take away our sin and then to replace it with His righteousness. Only in the Bible does that happen. But now I've got, to, I've got to pause for a minute. Should we be applying this to our own lives? I mean, if you think about it, how do we apply Jesus' parable of the sower to our own particular life, in our own particular life, especially when you look at how the path is, or the seed that falls along the path is eaten by birds? Well, raise your hand if you sit at home and read your Bible. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, we're going to talk. <laughs> Have you ever got through reading a section of Scripture? I mean, you're reading it, you're studying it, you just love what the Bible says, and you put it down and you think for a minute, and you go, what in the world did I just read? Right? You've had that happen? It could be just with the Bible. Most days with the Bible. But with anything, have you ever read something and walked away saying, I don't remember what I just read? Strange, isn't it? That's how Satan works. He comes in and snatches what you're reading away from you before you have a chance to digest it, before you have a chance to meditate on it, before you have a chance to apply it in your daily living. So the best way to do this is to pray. Before you study the Bible, pray and ask God to keep you focused on what you're reading so that you can truly take in all the beautiful, wonderful things that God has done so that seed can remain in your heart and grow and flourish so the devil doesn't snatch it away. But anyway, let's get back to the story about the seed. Jesus says, Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. The seed sprouts. The plant starts to grow. It loves that warm sunshine. It draws moisture from the ground. It's a happy plant. See, I was hoping somebody that I know that had plants, Lenita and Wayne are here, but they'll be here tomorrow, probably. Have you been up to Lenita's house and seen all her flowers? She's got a lot of happy plants. <laughs> and that's because they receive everything they need, right? They receive sunlight, they receive moisture, everything they need. But then the sun gets hot. I'm so glad I live here in Wisconsin while they're having 115 degrees down in Texas. The sun does get hot. You know that, right? You know what the sun can do to plants when it doesn't rain. That's why you've been yelling at me and she's been yelling at me, Pastor, pray for rain. My yard now is no longer brown. It's actually green again. The plants are looking good. Everything perked up. But those plants that are on the shallow, rocky soil, that ground quickly dries and the poor little plant eventually withers and it dies. And Jesus uses that illustration to show what happens when people who joyfully hear the word of God at first, but then they fall away when the coin gets tough. As a matter of fact, Jesus says the one who received the seed 
that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. Quite simply, if we or if I base my faith on our emotions, on our feelings, it's going to be shallow rooted. And that means it's not going to survive any of the persecution that comes in the last day. It's not going to survive going through hard, tough times, whether it be medically or financially or in our relationships. Whatever's going in our life will be too much for that seed to say it has no root. But if your faith is based on the Word of God and His promises, the Word of God that lasts forever, then it has the strength to survive the most difficult days that you could have. Whatever happens, whatever comes your way, your faith will be rooted in something solid, something firm, and it will continue to grow. As a matter of fact, it's a faith like that that leads us to believe these words. God tells you, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Anybody had a life-changing experience? No? Nobody here was eating fried foods and not exercising and drinking beer and smoking cigarettes and had a heart attack? No? Not yet? <laughs> right? Well, I guarantee, I got something that can change your life. Nothing will change your life more than the Bible. It's in God's Word when you actually discover how deeply corrupted you are. It's in God's Word where you see the wrong that's within yourself. Wrong that you've never seen before. It's in God's Word that you'll be led to believe that what God is talking about is called sin. And your life is filled with sin. And there's nothing you can do to save yourself. But it's in God's word where he tells you what he's done for you. How he sent Jesus. And that peace and joy that will come to you when you realize that there is nothing more to do. That Jesus has done it all for you. As a matter of fact, Paul says in Romans, therefore being justified, that is being declared righteous, not guilty by God, we have peace with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the closer you get to that peace of God, it doesn't matter what's happening out there. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You'll be able to go through the conflict no matter what's happening. Because you know the peace and love that God has for you and that how He's going to be with you, help you, protect you through all stages of life. Jesus talked about that. He talked about that when He said that if we're going to follow Him, we need to lift up our cross and follow Him. We need to die to ourselves and follow Him. You know it costs you absolutely nothing to be a Christian. But it costs you everything to continue to be one. The psalmist tells us that if you're deeply planted in God's Word, you're like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. God's Word is for His people. God's word is the strength. It's what sustains us through difficult times. It's what keeps us safe when the devil is tempting us. Because the devil can't be anywhere around God's word. But there's always something, right? There's always something. I ask you how many of you, raise your hand if you would, you don't do it now. But those of you who didn't, those of you who didn't know who you are, to raise your hand if you read your Bible at home. You know, if you're not reading at home, where are you reading it? It's God's Word that will help you through all the challenges of life. It's like, if you ever take, it, it's, the reason I keep repeating life is I want to get your attention for something. Those of you who had a garden this year, raise your hand. Those of you who had weeds in the garden, raise your hand. Yeah, from a distance, don't those plants look great? You know, I can see, we planted kohlrabi, and I can see one of us about that big. But if you want a really big kohlrabi, you've got to go out to Jelly's. We've got a kohlrabi as big as your head from Jelly's. But if you go out to your garden, you're standing there admiring it, you can see the beautiful plants. If you walk up a little closer, you see all those weeds growing right next to it. 
That's a bad thing. We see those weeds, and a good farmer knows that with time, those weeds will grow faster than the plants, and they'll choke them out. Jesus said, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. You see, he's telling us what happens when the seed of God, when the word is planted in the lives of people, and everything else kind of gets in the way. He says, the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and children, making it unfruitful. That's the part that gets me every time. It's the fact that I want to be, you know, I don't want to be on TV or the lives of the rich and shameless. But, you know, having a little wealth wouldn't hurt, right? But every time I'm watching my accounts, every time I say, hey, look, we got to come back. Stock market was up. Some of the money came back. I've only lost half my money now. You're right there with me, right? And then, and then you see the news report, and the stock market's down. And you go take a look, and the half you got back, hey, who needs money anyway? One day the government will take care of us, right? Jesus tells us that this deceitfulness of wealth and it's the words of life. And Jesus, you know, he talks, a lot of people don't know this, maybe you do. Jesus talked about money a lot. He told three stories. He told one, you remember the one about the rich man who could care less about the poor man named Lazarus who was starving to death in front of his house? He told us a parable about a rich man who had so much. His crops came in in abundance. He had a bumper crop. He had so much. He had to build bigger and better barns to store those crops. And he boasted of enjoying his wealth. What happened to him? He died that night. Jesus warns us about letting the worries of this life so consume us that we forget our Heavenly Father is taking care of us. Maybe that's why I like looking at the birds so much, because isn't that what he tells us to do? He says, look at the birds of the air. He tells us to watch them, and watch how our Heavenly Father takes care of them. I mean, that's what I was talking about. Every time I watch the TV and I see the things that you know aren't exactly going well, I forget that God is actually taking care of us. So when I see the hard hits on the stock market, or I hear or read the reports about how countries in Europe are, you know, they're, they're kind of getting ready for some big depression over there, and then they the uh, financial analyst and, and analysts on the news always talk about how we could go into recession, maybe even a double recession, maybe a great depression. Doesn't that get you worried? You get a report from your doctor, things aren't so good. You worry about your kids and what's going on in their lives. The cares and worries of this life can choke off the time that you have in God's Word. Even the good times that we have may not be good for us if they're choking off the amount of time that we can spend in God's Word. So, I'm going to give you a good check to find out if you have weedy soil. You want to know? You ready? Ask yourself, what's preventing you from spending time in God's Word? Is it television? Your hobbies? Fishing? That's a big one for me. I'm so glad I haven't found a lake to fish on. I got more time to spend in God's Word. Or else I'd be fishing. I'm waiting for Marvin to ask me to go ahead. How about you read other stuff, magazines, newspapers, but not God's Word, the habits of life. You know what? Satan eagerly desires that each one of you become an ABC Christian. I don't see any puzzled look, so I know you must all know what that means. You know what an ABC Christian is? Anything but church. That's what he wants. He loves to choke out God's Word with the cares and worries, even with the joys we have in life. And each and every one of you here this evening knows, otherwise you would be here, that we are all blessed by God. We are so blessed. We're so blessed to hear Jesus tell us that wherever His Word, 
wherever it goes, it's going to produce some fruit in the lives of people. You heard it in the Old Testament lesson for this evening. God, through the prophet Isaiah, says, My word shall not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God wants all people to be saved. He brings salvation to them through His word. And so still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was so. He who has ears, let him hear. You think that was an odd saying? Does everybody here have ears? They may not work well. I know I don't hear very well. I still have ears, right? So that means everyone who has these things attached to your head, you should be able to hear. Jesus is giving us the explanation of what happens when you spend time in the Word of God. You guys are the good soil or you wouldn't be here. He says, but the one who receives the seed and fell on good soil is the man who hears the Word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was so. In other words, it's good banking. It's good investment. The time you invest in God's Word, the time you invest in being alone with the Lord and His Word, will produce tremendous blessings in your life. None like you've ever seen before. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, the Word will bring you close to the love of God and all the blessings that you have in His kingdom. And so we have the illustration. The farmer takes the plow. I know it's the tractor these days, but let's use it his word. The farmer takes the plow and he goes back and forth across the field and he breaks up the soil. Then he sows his seed and the seed falls down into those cracks where it's able to grow and to germinate. That's how God is telling us his word works with us. God has changed your heart through the wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has led you to accept his word which he's planted in you. And he's nourished you and strengthened your faith by hearing the word and by coming to the altar and receiving his son. He has nourished and strengthened that faith. And so you have found the promises of God, the promises of Isaiah are true for you. God's word did not return in you. And so, having that in mind, knowing God's word accomplishes what it desires, listen to this prayer that Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3. Paul writes, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That's what we want you to know. That's why we pray, or at least I pray every day, that you take time to be in the Word of God. It doesn't have to be a long time. It doesn't have to be very long at all. Five minutes, two minutes, three minutes. Get that app they have. When you see the app they have on all the commercials, where you can listen to a devotion every day and have prayer. I know it's Catholic, but that's okay. <laughs> take time to be in the Word of God. When you do that, the Lord will draw you close to the good news of His kingdom. And you'll learn about His undeserved love and His kindness and His mercy. And all of that <laughs> lasts forever. Brothers and sisters, this is God's word for you this evening. We promise. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now join together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven.
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, mercy, our sins have merited thorns and briars and yield only trouble and strife. Forgive our transgressions and discipline us against temptation, that we may rejoice in your name and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you sent forth your word as abundantly as rains upon the earth. Grant that we would never take your generosity for granted, but would seek the help and refreshment of your word in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of life, continue to sow your word through the fields of the earth. Bless pastors and missionaries as they proclaim your truth. Prepare the hearts of all who hear to believe and yield abundant fruit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless parents with faithfulness as they plant your word into their children, that they may grow steadfast among the cares and troubles of this world. Protect and guide our children, Lord, from the evil one, and bless them as they grow in the grace and knowledge of their Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator of heaven and earth, by your word you send forth rain and snow to make the world bring forth and sprout. Give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Provide us with seasonal weather and bountiful harvest, that we may enjoy daily bread and praise your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, look with mercy upon those who suffer from illness of body or mind. Be especially with all who are listed on our prayer list and all whose names we carry in our hearts. Give them healing, comfort them with your presence, grant them patience to endure suffering, and assure them at all times that they are your dear children, and that the glory of Christ awaits them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, you have made us your holy children and freed us from bondage to the flesh. Sustain us in repentance and faith that we may receive Christ's body and blood for life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, your spirit calls us by the gospel to the new life of faith. We praise you and acknowledge you as our Lord. Deliver us from the devil's temptations that we may live under you and serve you in righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, share the Lord's peace.
Christ.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.